Lord of the Oasis Chapter 151, The Beginning of the All-Out Attack Hum hum hum! The bowstrings trembled violently and the arrows darted through the air. Under the city wall, the arrow all over the ground bloomed like white flowers, mixed with the rich smell of blood, more and more demonic. The strong and burly jackal warriors were howling and striding forward. The arrows all over their bodies made them like hedgehogs. Even if they tried their best to move forward, it was only the momentary recovery of consciousness just before death, finally in the continuous rain of arrows no longer hold on, heavy fell to the ground. Stop shooting! The voice of Phyrantus rang out the city wall. In the arrow tower and the city wall, all the long-ranged troop class soldiers stopped pulling. And that originally dense as a rainstorm of arrows also came to an abrupt end. Orders were forbidden. Just outside the city wall, the centurion of jackals, which had been lined up in orderly formation, was covered in arrows, and the fresh blood that seeped out had dyed the sand behind them red. The scene was extremely tragic, but the soldiers on the city wall still looked indifferent. This was a life and death battle. Pity? It didn't exist. They all understood that pity for the enemy was cruelty to themselves. In just a short 50 meters, the 650 archers on the city wall with long-range bows and crossbows had already let the jackal soldiers know what it meant to arrows shower. Looking at the silent jackal army on the dune in the distance, these archers quickly checked the crossbows in their hands and made sure their weapons without any damage. They continued to take out their arrows and crossbows in the quivers behind them, prepared to shoot again. Standing on the city wall, Kant clenched his fists, and his face was also extremely solemn. He was somewhat mouth-drying. It was the calm before the storm, and the jackals from the coast of Mannheim were not deterred by such a dense shower of arrows, nor were they deterred from attacking by the stubborn resistance of the fortress of Drondheim. Both sides were in the same situation. Kent and Drondheim had no way out. The jackals from the kingdom of Greymane also had no way out. Howl. The howl, almost mournful, was long, full of anger and despair. More of the sent urals began to howl. It was like walking in the night when you were confronted by hungry wolves. The howl was so gnawing at the heart that ordinary people's legs go weak and could barely stand. This was a sorrowful song in despair. Kant was breathing a little fast as he looked at the jackals standing a thousand meters away, their heads raised and howling. Even his compatriots in the desert of Naran, those low-level jackals, were unable to cry out, because this was the grief of a civilized race, for the despair of the road ahead, and even if they were shattered to pieces, all wanted to be completely desperate determination. These jackals were indeed going all out. They had no choice but to go all out. In the southern part of the Naran Desert, the Greymane Kingdom had spent a huge amount of resources and resources to prepare the strategic layout, but it had already been completely destroyed by Kant. For example, a Saki of the Salt Mine. Wells of the Lower Jackal Tribe. The Lower Jackals scattered in the southern desert. There was also a crucial sentry oasis that could be used as an outpost base and could be called an enclave. Exiled by the dukedom of Leo to the Naran Desert, Kant, instead, appeared to release a real lion, occupying the sentry oasis, establishing the Drondheim fortress, destroying the Jackal tribe, and killing Asaki. Intentionally or unintentionally, he had easily solved the layout of the Kingdom of Greymane. It was less than three months since Kant had arrived at the Naran Desert. However, due to the difficulty of information transmission, the information could not be timely received by the Greymane Kingdom, so the higher jackals had no idea at all. The strategic plan they had struggled to make was easily erased by half, and it was vital to the southern part of the desert without the possibility of regrets. Because of this ignorance, step by step they entered the current desperate situation. They could not retreat at all. Without food and water for the return journey, they retreated only to be dried up in the desert. In fact, they had been planning this strategy from start to finish for nearly a decade, even as soon as the lower jackals emerged within their sphere of influence and became aware of the human states to the south. 
the reason why they could hide in Mannheim coast for so long, and give up most of the stars in the interests of the sea, was to across the desert, and come to this piece of human nations bordering the south desert edge, making the successful development of Grey Main Kingdom colonies and their retreat, off the coast of Mannheim's, as well as vital home front. The arrow would have to be shoot. These expeditionary army jackals had no choice but to attack and risk their lives. This was the only way to survive. Roar. The centurion let out a furious roar, and the five square formations began to advance in an orderly manner. The 2,900 jackals, all of them battle-ready soldiers, now made a general assault, exhausted as they were, but the heavy infantry, once invincible on the coast of Mannheim and capable of crushing everything, still brought with it a soaring momentum. Stepping step by step in the sand, the dull sound was like the slow gallop of heavy horsemen. The faint sound of crash could be heard endlessly. It was the clear sound of male armor colliding with each other when they walked, but it was not sweet. It was more like death, shaking its little bells like a toy, waiting for the final harvest of life. The probing attack had ended, and now it was a brazen all-out attack. Everyone. From the top of the wall attic, Manide looked at the silver-colored troops slowly pressing over in front of him, with a quite grave face. He was holding Kant's light crossbow in his hand, commanding the 500 Swadian militia standing at the top of the attic to fight. But now, he could not help stepping back, gritting his teeth, he shouted at the militia beside him, Fire, get ready. The 500 Swadian recruit raised the loaded crossbows in their hands and aimed them at the slowly approaching troops. That strength of unity brought great oppression to their hearts. Not to mention these militia. Even the experienced archers of Vikia and Swadian in the attic of the city wall had a slightly changed face, they immediately gritted their teeth and wore a determined expression of readiness to fight. Coming. Firentus' breathing was also slightly hurried. But at this critical moment Kant stood directly in front of him and took over his command of the wall. At the same turning to him, Firentus, go and command all of our cavalry troops to gather at the south gate. If you find an opportunity, or when the city wall is in danger, you will lead the charge. Chapter 152, Effective Use of Corpses Kant's face was solemn. Looking at the army that was slowly approaching, he said in a low voice, hurry up. But, Firentus tried to dissuade Kant. However, Kant said in a low voice, listen to my orders, hurry up. I will obey your orders. Firentus gritted his teeth. His face was extremely solemn. Looking at Kant's back, without a moment's hesitation, he turned around and walked down the city wall, running towards the open space where the heavy cavalry was. This was a critical moment. It was also not the time to hesitate. The cavalry in the open space were all on standby. Firentus mounted his horse, drew his knight's sword, and, watching the silent gaze of the cavalry, shouted to the east gate, All cavalry, follow me. There was the rumble of hooves. The heavy cavalry of the Drondheim fortress were moving quickly along the streets. The peasant women with forks and cleavers were guarding the southern gate. When Firentus rode up, they opened the gates of the city, they understood and immediately opened the gate, and the heavy cavalry and light cavalry filed out, forming up into a thick and square formation in the flat desert outside the city gate. However, they did not charge. They just stayed put. Firentus was waiting. This was his plan with Kant, which, though not yet stated, they both understood. The idea of defending the wall, of using the advantage of the wall to keep the enemy at bay, was impractical, or impossible. They could only use external support to alleviate the pressure on the city walls, and the cavalry unit led by Firentus was such external support. Cavalry could not defend on the city wall because they were the strongest with war horses. But leaving the walls behind and using high mobility to give the enemy a sudden charge at a critical moment was as effective as coming down the walls on horseback. It was even better for defending the city wall. The defense of a city often did not depend entirely on the city wall. The defensive fortress itself was a strategic defense. 
If they lost even the outside of the city wall, it was equivalent to lose the tactical initiative, and completely lose the ability of the tactical offensive, slaughtered by others. This was the reason why can't let Firentus lead the cavalry and leave. There was another reason. The city wall could not stop the attack of the jackals. The stone walls of 5 meters high, 2 meters high reinforcement attic, seemed to be 7 meters high, but in actual battles, as long as the jackals came to the 5 meters high stone walls, they could climb over the windows of the reinforced attic and directly enter the attic of the city wall, using their two-handed battle axes to kill wantonly, did not need to climb up the 7 meters high attic and then jump into the fortress. The arrows of the archers were not muskets. A single bullet could incapacitate an enemy. In the era of cold weapons. As long as the arrows did not hit their vitals, it was perfectly normal to fight like a hedgehog all over your body. Fortunately, the 500 Swadian militia at the top of the tower had already piled up all the rocks that they had obtained from the city wall. As long as the enemy got close, they would be able to defend for a long time. As long as they could suppress the attack of the Jackal Expeditionary Force, with the deterring the enemy and the arrows of the archers, they could kill as many of the enemy as possible, reducing the strength of this siege force and weakening their offensive ability. Just behind the city gate, behind the 50 Swadian infantry, a golden lion with a red bottom was standing in the middle of the street. It fluttered even though there was no wind. It's all up to you. Kant exhaled slowly a muffled breath of tension. This flag, by far, was his most useful war artifact. 200 meters. The Ravenstern rangers spoke and reported the enemy's distance from the wall. At the same time, the 20 rangers pulled out the cone arrows from their quivers and two arms forcefully pulled open the white heavy bows in their hands, pointing towards the distance. Without waiting for orders, they directly released their fingers, and the bowstrings emitted a soft sound, the brown all arrows disappeared in an instant. They could only see that in the distance, twenty undetectable black dots were rapidly across the arc, appearing two hundred meters away. Whoosh 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 whoosh! The arrows tore through the air, and the shaft of the arrows swayed slightly to bring more force. The jackal warriors charging at the front seemed to have heard something, and their ears twitched slightly. When they looked up slightly, a black dot instantly appeared in their eyes and then grew larger and larger, almost taking up their entire field of vision. Puff. Then, it covered the salt mine. The brown feather at the end of the arrow was still swaying with the vibration of the shaft. However, it was not the only one that fell. There were eight other jackal warriors at the front, with arrows in their faces, gave a low, weak howl, and fell to their knees, tottering on their legs but not quite falling. The jackal warriors behind them roared and supported their bodies. But not fraternity. On the city wall, in Kant's eyes, the nine jackals, shot in the eye, held high by their companions, like shields, across their faces, to ward off any arrows that might appear. It was a cruel battlefield. If they wanted to survive, they even had to make use of the corpses of their companions. No one thought that this was a cruel display. Now it was the best choice of the jackals, who had no shield and could only fend off the arrows in this way. Even the jackals, who had been shot dead and wounded by the rangers of Ravenstern and could not continue to fight, did not mind being raised as physical shields. In their eyes, they were also the honor of resisting injury for their peers, which was to create a victorious future. 150 meters. There are archers Vikia shouting. Now that they were within their shooting range, the long bows in their hands were suddenly pulled open and the arrows in their hands were shot out. There was no need to aim at all, for a vast area was already covered by an army of 2,900 jackals. All you have to do is shoot it, and you would hit it 100%. The whistling sound of the arrows did not stop. The buzzing sound of the bowstring vibrating filled the entire attic and arrow tower. 100 meters. The Sweden crossbowmen began to shoot, pulling the trigger and shot out the iron bolt. The whistling sound did not stop. At 50 meters, the Swadian militia also joined in the shooting. The rain of arrows was even more pouring. 
Each wave would take away the lives of more than a dozen Jack Allen, as well as the light and heavy injuries of dozens of people. The shrill whistling of arrows tore through the air. Death spread among the jackals, who, at any moment or place, stumbled and fell under the blows of the arrows, but more often than not, were lifted up by their companions beside them, ready human shields. The jackal corpses held high above their heads effectively blocked the dense rain of arrows. The corpses who were not afraid of the arrows were just like shields with excellent effects. Finally, at the very front, the jackals were getting closer and closer to the city wall, eventually came to the city wall, revealing their bloodshot eyes. They roared and threw the corpses filled with arrows above their heads at their feet, and then knelt down directly at the bottom of the city wall which was like a ladder, allowed the jackals behind them to step on them and climb up just like the human shield from before. Now, these jackals at the front were willing to be the human siege ladders. Chapter 153, Get Caught Up in a Mad Offensive Roar The jackals were howl of despair, but the original bloodthirsty and murderous nature, aroused at this moment, was far more savage and tyrannical than their indigenous brethren, the lower jackals. And the wisdom brought by a civilized race. The front row of jackals knelt down and used their backs as stairs, while the back row of jackals mercilessly stepped on the backs of their companions. Using this human flesh stairs, they frantically climbed towards the attic window at the top of the city wall like ants attached to ants, even on the left and right sides, the archer towers and the archers at the city gates had formed a crossbow rain of arrows, causing casualties to many of the jackals who wanted to climb up, but, the jackals who followed behind continued to climb up with bloodshot eyes. In the current situation, with heavy losses, they also wanted to capture the outpost oasis, even if more than half of the casualties, but also to take this vital fortress. How? The centurion was hidden among the numerous jackal warriors, all of whom had reached the base of the wall, and two of the jackal body steps of human flesh appeared. All the jackals were trying their best to climb up. They had no way out. As for Kant, he was undeterred by their frantic attacks. Because he, who was exiled, also had no way out. Go and tell Manide to throw all the stones down. Don't let the jackals climb up. Kant was issuing orders loudly. The Swadian crossbowman behind him, who was the messenger, put away the crossbow in his hand turned and quickly climbed the ladder to the top of the wooden attic, where they shouted back to Manid about Kant's orders. Got it. Manide replied. The noisy battlefield was filled with angry howls and soldiers' abuse. A cold sweat ran down his face as the battle raged, but the crossbow in his hand refused to stop, and he shouted to the Swadian militiamen, change rocks and don't let the jackals come up, hurry up. The others don't hesitate. Keep shooting. Only a few people were needed to throw the rocks. The other Swadian militia still needed to fire fast with their crossbows. Although the power was relatively small. But within a distance of less than 10 meters, the power of the hunting crossbow in their hands was also enough to pierce through the mail armor of the jackals and even hit a vital point, it could directly hit the target. Looking at the layer of jackal corpses under the city wall, they had some credit. Smash! Twenty Swadian militia carried a stone the size of half a human head. Arrived at the edge of the city wall, looking at the noisy battlefield below, one by one the teeth of the mouth, eyes with bloodshot heads of ferocious beasts, the heart slightly trembling, but the hands of the stones were held high in the heart, heavy hit down. In order to protect their homes, this group of peasant militia was willing to die. Sentry Oasis Drondheim Fortress was their homeland. Whoosh! The stone was heavily smashed down. That speed brought with it the faint sound of wind, crashed into the tide of the jackals in an instant, smashing into the head of the jackals who were still kneeling on the ground, building a human ladder, clenching his teeth as he endured the stomps of his companions. Blood splattered, and brain matter burst out, red and white splattering everywhere. As for the jackal whose head had been smashed, was directly lying among the pile of corpses beneath him, staring eyes full of despair and disbelief, but the recessed skull made their staring eyes quickly open. 
the stone was thrown down with more force than the cone-headed arrows of the Ranger of Livingston. Bang 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 bang! A dozen stones fell, and even the stare of human flesh that had been piled up so hard that the jackals were scattered, laying a layer of corpses on the ground. Even the other jackals, for a moment, howled with rage, but the Swadian militiamen at the top of the wall's attic could not be shaken. Instead, the militiamen took advantage of the opportunity to come to the edge and pull the trigger to bombard the jackals below with a shower of arrows. Dozens more jackals fell. More and more bodies piled up at the bottom, and the jackals grew more and more frantic as the death toll rose. Howls of despair and anger filled the air. But the jackals had not give up. A new front row knelt on the pile of bodies again, becoming a human ladder for the back row to climb on their own, not caring at all about the rocks falling from above, and blowing their brains out in a matter of minutes. They had fallen into a kind of madness that was fearless in a desperate situation. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Manide was cursing the jackals at the bottom of the pile of corpses. He pulled the light crossbow in his hand, and the arrow pierced the chest of a jackal at the bottom. It pierced through the mail armor and seemed to have hurt his lungs, but the jackal did not care at all. Instead, he looked up at him with a ferocious smile on his face, unexpectedly forcefully pulled out the arrow from his chest. The blood that splashed out had dyed the linen robe on his body red. This was a demonstration of his fearlessness towards Manide, but also a fearlessness about death. The price, of course, was that when the arrow was pulled out, the jackal fell to his knees, limped on his legs, and became a staircase for the jackals behind him, a new staircase filled with dozens of corpses. It was because of this that Manide cursed the jackals for being mad. Because in this deadly charge, the bodies had piled up a slope, and even though the militiamen had hurled down the stones, and the arrows from the bowmen on either side of the arrow towers and at the gates, the jackals could barely reach the garret windows by means of the slope of their companions' corpses. Wu Bang! The two-handed battle axe fiercely struck the windowsill, splashing the sawdust on the face of the cross bowmen inside. The battle situation became more and more dangerous. Throw all our grease down! Kant's face was calm as he stretched out his hand and shouted a command in reply. In the corner of the attic, there were four clay pots immediately carried by the Swadian crossbowmen and they fiercely smashed them out of the window, smashing down on a jackal who had poked his head over. The pots immediately shattered, and the amber-colored liquid inside instantly filled the entire staircase made of corpses. Torch! Kant's order continued to ring out. It was clear and loud in this noisy battlefield. The torches that had long been prepared were immediately brought over and were still burning as they were thrown out of the window. When they came into contact with the amber-colored liquid, a raging fire immediately rose up, and billowing black smoke with a fishy smell quickly began to spread. The amber-colored liquid in the earthen jar was the oil purchased from the leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn. The oil was brewed from the fattest pigs. The Best Inflammable Substance Chapter 154, A Renewed Offensive The Swadian crossbowman slammed down the earthen clay pot. It smashed into the skull of the jackal at the front and shattered into countless pieces. The amber-colored oil splashed from the broken pot, but more oil splashed onto the corpse stairs made of corpses outside the city walls and howling jackals clambering upward, trampling over the corpses of others. The torches were thrown straight out of the window. In a short moment, the corpse stairs that were covered in oil suddenly burst into flames. The heat wave was extremely oppressive. Flame spreading through the bodies on the linen robe and hair was help up the fire, produced crackling sound, and with the cans of oil, the fire more intense, the latter, composed of external wall body was burning up the big fire, let those jackals who were still climbing, under miserable cry started to recede. The fear of fire was imprinted in the depths of the souls of living creatures, and even these jackals. The fire spread, and the raging flames created a billowing heat wave. The jackals with bloodshot eyes, who were originally surrounded underneath, suddenly regained a little of their sanity. They were cowering and too timid to climb up the flaming corpse ladder and retreated subconsciously. The siege was defeated 
and the jackal attacks weakened. One surge of energy led to another bust. As the madness faded in their eyes, fear appeared in the hearts of the jackals. No one wanted to continue dying, let alone climb the still-burning corpse ladder. Howl! A mournful wolf howl appeared. It was the order of the commander to retreat. The entire Jack Allen army was not able to continue the crazy attack. When the violent attacks after failure, temporarily away was a wise choice. Otherwise, the morale of the army would be severely depressed after a long time, under the threat of death, the initial madness would turn into a hopeless situation, causing the entire army to collapse. The expeditionary army began to retreat. In less than 30 minutes, they had left more than 600 of their comrades' corpse, and were retreating in tragic strides, their orderly formation beginning to show signs of disintegration. The jackal crazy offensive had dissipated. The archers in the attic of the city wall suddenly felt the pressure they were facing instantly ease, and all heaved a sigh of relief. However, these archers did not relax. The longbows and crossbows in their hands continued to shoot out arrows. Even the Swadian militia who were holding hunting crossbows at the top of the city walls continued to shoot out arrows, they chased after the retreating troops. Now was the time to take advantage of the situation to kill the enemy. The sound of the air being torn apart was still shrill. The jackal troops quickly retreated, but they still left behind over 30 corpses before finally leaving 200 meters away well beyond the effective firing range of the human marksmen on the walls. Kant looked at the jackal troops who had returned to the bottom of the dune and started to reorganize their troops, and the solemnity in his eyes eased slightly. This meant that the other side would not continue the attack for a while. At least, they had to stabilize their morale and encourage these jackals who had fallen into a desperate situation before they could attack the city again. But even so, the troops who had already been defeated in the siege wanted to continue to enter the city and forget everything else, only knew how to climb up with all their efforts, even if they became corpses, they would still have to be used as stepping stones for their companions. Their crazy status was no longer possible. There was something in the depths of Kant's eyes as he thought of the madness of giving one's life for the sake of death. He turned his head slightly, and the red-bottomed golden lion fluttered behind him. Kant noticed a certain fact. In that group of jackals crazy attack, this flag of battlefield artifact, actually failed to cut theirs morale, whether it was the first round of morale reduction or the increase in the number of deaths to reduce morale, it was very difficult, as these jackals who went into hysterics, there was a constant of morale, it was impossible to be cut. Only when their attacks suffered a setback and they retreated backward did they finally succeed in reducing the morale of a portion of the jackals. However, the reduction was not great at all. It did not even cause the enemy's troops to fall into a state of low morale. Falling into a state of madness will automatically stabilize the morale and cannot be cut. Kant quickly came to a conclusion and his guess was very accurate. However, this accurate conclusion was not a good thing. He could not help but sigh. Turning his head to look at the archers who were moving their arms and massaging their muscles, he felt a little more at ease. After all, he was gratified that his soldiers were fighting back without fear of their madness. Pass on the message, watch out. The enemy will not give us too long. Kant instructed the messenger and turned to walk towards the stairs. Instead of leaving the walls, he climbed to the top of the attic end, Looking at the rows of Swadian militiamen sitting on the ground to rest, he found Manad, who was still busy, and asked, How are things with you? Everything is fine. Manide bowed, but still said solemnly, It's just that there are not enough crossbows. So soon. Kant frowned. Manide sighed, Yes, the militiamen had emptied their quivers in the last battle. After all, the militiamen had only twenty arrows in their quivers, which was not enough to sustain a high-intensity siege. I see. Kant nodded. Manide was telling the truth. It was probably not just these Swadian militias. Even the other crossbow would have had no more than a few in his quiver by now. In the frenzied siege battle just now, the archers had played an absolute role. 
the 600 plus jackals corpses below were almost all caused by these archers. Moreover, the retreating jackals, most of the people had heavy wounds on their bodies. If not for the dense rain of arrows, such a situation would not have happened. After pondering for a while, Kant said, this problem is very easy to solve. That's great. Manide heaved a sigh of relief. Kant's solution to the problem was naturally the ammo replenishment X3 he had obtained from the lucky draw. Mental communication worked in the system. With his affirmation, the golden card in his mind suddenly scattered. The number of suffixes also changed from three to two. However, on the city walls, inside and outside the arrow tower, the data streams in the quivers of the Vikian archers, the Ravenstern rangers, the Swadian crossbowmen and militia began to spread. In the blink of an eye, it swelled up again. The arrows were inserted into the quivers in an orderly manner, and the arrows were neatly arranged inside the quivers. The archer's ammunition had all recovered. But Kant frowned slightly. Although all the arrows were restored to their former number, the strength of the bowmen had been greatly exhausted, especially in those who had to draw the bow. In the heat of battle, the constant drawing of the bow would strain the arm muscles severely. At this moment, Kant somewhat missed the volley cards that he had used up completely. After all, 500 Vikia marksmen could kill a lot of jackals in an instant with three volleys of arrows. Howl! At this moment, the mournful howl of jackals reappeared. The Swadian militia who had been sitting at the top of the attic, were all back on their feet, their crossbows pointed at the outside world, their faces still cold and determined to defend their homes. Manide held the light crossbow with a solemn expression, this attack might be even crazier. The jackals howled. These guys, who had been boosted by the morale, had completely turned into desperados. The stairs of the corpses were still burning, but the foundation was still under the city wall, forming a slope. As long as they rushed up against the rain of arrows and continued to make the slope higher, the jackals behind them could even climb into the city wall through the window. There would be a fierce battle for the walls. This was the most direct melee, but for archers who were not good at close combat, it was their weakness. Fighting against a 2 to 3 meter strong jackal was like throwing a stone at a stone. I already have plans. Kant narrowed his eyes, with a hint of viciousness. But he would not use this arrangement until the end. He turned and headed straight for the garret and told Manad, if the walls below begin to fall, you and your militia should immediately leave the attic floor by the other stairs and fight the Swadian infantry behind the city gates. Got it. Manide nodded. Well. Kant turned around and walked down the stairs again into the attic of the city wall. Not far below the dunes. The jackals, rearranged in formation, resumed their attack. Chapter 155, The Power of the Elemental Giants In a very short period of time, the Jackal Expeditionary Force was completely reorganized. Under the order of the commander, they rearranged themselves into five square formations and slowly pressed towards the city wall. They did not wait. Because these jackals understood that the moment they set foot in the southern part of the Naran Desert and lost their follow-up supplies, Time had abandoned them and stood behind the humans. The advantage of time had shifted. Now, it was the humans who were in control of time. They had sufficient supplies and city walls. They could not wait. The more time dragged on, the greater the chance of death off these jackal warriors who had once been invincible in the Mannheim coast. Now, they could only grit their teeth and attack while they still had some energy left in their bodies besides fighting with their lives, the more time they waited, the weaker the jackal warriors would become. In the end, they would become even weaker than human children. The sun was hanging in the sky, releasing its mighty power, causing the scorching and terrifying temperature to sweep across the desert. Noon was coming. This was even more threatening to the jackal expeditionary army who lacked water. Howl! The commander's mournful howl appeared. The five heavy footmen phalanxes began to move forward at a faster pace and even began to run. Their targets were the two corpse stairs that were still burning, 
as well as the thick and heavy city gates that were wrapped in iron sheets and studded with iron nails. The remaining jackals were still in neat formation, their faces grim and desperate. Kant's heart was beating faster. But his face remained calm. He slowly raised his right hand and his voice was clear and loud, Free fire, everyone. Free fire. Free fire. Free fire. The squad leaders passed down Kant's orders. But compared to Kant's calm face, their cold sweat and nervous faces revealed their unease. Before, they had been able to support themselves, but with a small number of men, they felt great pressure, especially the archers. After the hasty shooting, the biceps in their arms had been severely strained, and now they became extremely sore. If they continued to draw the bow and shoot, they could not sustain themselves for a long time. The only good news was that they had not suffered any casualties due to the jackal's lack of siege equipment and ranged units. Start shooting. The Ravenstern ranger drew the heavy bow in his hand and gritted his teeth as he continued to shoot the cone arrows in his quiver. These archers from the Misty Mountains were also beginning to feel tired and hands aching, but the bows were still perfectly drawn and the arrows were still deadly. At least six jackals fell in the first round. Other victims were not killed on the spot, but still suffered mixed injuries. They stepped into the range of the archers. These jackals could only choose to endure silently. The Vikian archers and the Swadian crossbowmen also began to rain down their arrows. The sound of arrows tearing through the air was incessant and the arrows and crossbows flying through the air could be seen with the naked eye, constantly hitting the formation of jackals. At the last 50 meters, the hunting crossbow of the Swadian militia also began to fire. More and more jackals fell under the dense rain of arrows. Especially in the front row of those jackals, full of arrows, male armor on their bodies had been pierced through by the arrowheads, and bright red blood seeped out and dripped to the solace of their feet, leaving bloody footprints one step at a time, however, as long as their bodies were still able to hold on, they would still grit their teeth and let out low howls of encouragement, acting as a shield for their comrades behind them. Concentrate and fire. Kant's orders were being transmitted and even if there were jackal howls coming from outside, the archers could still hear them clearly. This was the credit of the messengers. As the orders were given, the archers' firepower instantly turned around. They were no longer looking for the strength to kill the enemy. Instead, they poured all their arrows onto the two Jack Allen corpses and piled them up on the slope, forming layers of rain of arrows that turned the jackals who wanted to step on the stairs into hedgehogs. Howl. The jackalans' attacks became more and more ferocious. With the shrill howling of the jackals grew more and more violent. The jackals didn't even care if the rain of arrows in front of them became more and more concentrated and the burning flames were so painful that they strode on the corpse steps, howling up, or falling down, to form higher and firmer steps. Come on, push, smash. Manide's voice was a little hoarse and sweat kept coming out of his face. The light crossbow in the hand still pulled the arrow on the string, pulled the trigger to shoot at the bottom at the same time, still turned his head to urge loudly, speed faster. Is your limp movement a sign that you have not eaten this morning? The Swadian militia didn't answer. They gritted their teeth and picked up the stones, smashing them down. With a few muffled sounds, Two or three jackals were smashed to the ground by the stones on the burning corpse stairs. Their limbs were twisted strangely. Although they didn't die on the spot, they couldn't stand up at all. Moreover, the Swadian militia didn't stop, but picked up the stones with clenched teeth and threw them at the bottom. This was a critical moment. The Jack Allen corpses had formed a four-meter-wide and six-meter-long slope. The fire caused by the broken oil tanks, the arrows from the archers, and even the rocks thrown down by the militia couldn't stop the jackals from climbing up the city wall. The defensive terrain seemed to have lost its effectiveness. Kant and the others, unable to clean up the body, could not stop the attack of the jackals. There were even a few times where if it wasn't for the fact that the Ravenstern rangers had swung his two-handed greatsword and forcefully cut down the Jack Allen who were so close to him, the city wall and attic would have been broken in. The situation is critical. 
This thought surfaced in Kant's mind and he was already aware that the situation was getting to a disadvantage. The jackal reckless attack almost chilled his heart. Turning his head to look at the archers on the city walls, the high frequency of firing in a short period of time not only exhausted them, their hands ached, but even their spirits were a little depressed. After all, their spirits were kept in a state of high tension. If the jackals continued to attack like this, it was only a matter of time before the city wall fell. Damn it! Kant secretly gritted his teeth and subconsciously touched his chest. He still had a trump card. But before he could make a decision, a muffled sound suddenly appeared by his ear and subconsciously looked down. At the nearby gate, the fifty Swadian infantry who had been guarding there were already shouting and pushing forward with their shields. With the howling of the jackals, the figure of them appeared inside the gate. Clearly, that muffled sound was caused by the jackals breaking through the city gate. Lord Kent. The Swadian crossbowman who acted as a messenger at the stairway quickly reported, the city gate has fallen and the infantry is organizing a resistance. I see, Kant replied, a cold glint appearing in his eyes. He walked quickly toward the stairs, and there was a loud and confused shout of death below. A dozen jackals were charging through the gates with their two-handed battle axes, slashing deep marks in the thick fan-shaped shields of the Svadian infantry. Uh -huh. The Svadian infantry, however, fell back half a step with a red face, and the left hand, which had been raised with a shield, was also abnormally drooped. Obviously, the damage caused by this heavy blow made it difficult for these fourth-level heavy infantry to resist effectively. The strength of the jackal warriors was indeed far greater than that of humans. This was a racial advantage. But the well-armed Swadian infantry, undeterred, carried on with their shields, piercing their chainmail with their sharp hands and swords, leaving deep holes in their blood. No, the jackals are attacking. In the attic of the city wall, there was the roaring of the crossbowmen and the muffled groans of the Ravenstern rangers. Kant looked round at once. At the position of the corpse stairs on the city wall, it seemed as if they had felt the breakthrough of the city gate and were inspired. They actually rushed up to more than a dozen Jack Allen, waving their two-handed battle axes, in the narrow space, they fought with the Ravenstern rangers. However, looking at the exchange of the two-handed battle axes and the great swords, one could tell that the rangers were constantly retreating. Obviously, Still the strong and experienced high-level Jack Allen had the upper hand. Continue shooting. Swadian crossbowmen, go and support the Ravenstern rangers. Kant gritted his teeth, but his orders still remained unruffled. The Swadian crossbowmen with fan shields quickly went up to relieve the pressure on the Ravenstern rangers. In this short period of time, at least five rangers died in the attic because they couldn't block the jackal's heavy axe. This made Kant's heart tremble. This was one of his few tier 5 archers. With bloodshot eyes, Kant watched as more and more jackals climbed down the corpse ladder. He had already made up his mind. Reaching out to touch the two thin pages on his chest, Kant's thought communication system said, Summon elemental giants. Page of clear spring and page of fertile soil were instantly activated. As Kant's gaze passed through the window of the attic and landed outside the city wall, familiar spatial fluctuations appeared. Within the soil, seven earth elemental giants formed from soil and four water elemental giants that were slightly blood-red were shockingly there, elemental light flashed in Kant's eyes before turning into a hostile and violent emotion. Right around the eleven elemental giants, a huge jackal army was crowding towards the corpse stairs and the broken city gates, completely unprepared for the sudden appearance of these elemental giants. P.S., sorry, I was late to update something today, there will be another watch later, three a day is a must, no less, just wait a little, sorry. I may have to attend the wedding tomorrow, so the update time will be pushed to the afternoon, but there will be no less than three. Just a word in advance. Chapter 156, The Eruption of Intimidation Bang bang bang! The thick mud arm heavily smashed the surrounding jackals. The earth elemental giants used their powerful strength to rampage around the jackal troops. 
Crash crash. The water elemental giant's attacks were even more bizarre. The body formed by the water current swept across the jackals like acid, eroding their skins and muscles at once, causing the jack allen to howl in pain as the battle axes in their hands hacked down, leaving only a brief gap in the bodies of the elements of the reddish-colored water, which would soon heal. As for the earth elemental giant, its body was full of holes, but also fearless of the jackal's axe. For a moment there was chaos outside the walls. Even the jackals in the attic of the city wall were killed, those had broken through the city gate were pushed back, the follow-up support unexpectedly did not keep up, and all of them were held back by the eleven elemental giants. The direction Kant had released the elemental giants was near the stairs and the city gate. This was also the position he had carefully considered when summoning. Don't be stunned. Pack up the corpses and continue firing. However, Kent waved his hand and quickly gave the order. The jackal corpses were directly thrown out of the city wall while the corpses of their own people were moved to the bottom of the city wall, but most of the archers still forcefully held their sore hands and continued to rain arrows down. This was their way of fighting back and the attacks of the jackals were not over yet. The time is near. Kant gritted his teeth, breathing fast from the strong smell of blood and the stench of burning. Looking at the jack allen outside that was in a mess due to the elemental giants, who were fighting back brazenly, Kant subconsciously looked towards the south, where his true main force was hiding. Once appeared, they would be able to turn the tide of the battle in an instant. But now was not the time to appear. They had to wait. Kant understood, and so did Phyrantus. Keep quiet. Phyrantus roared angrily, signaling for the restless cavalry to calm down. Knight sword in the hand tightly holding, his face is very ugly, but still holding their emotions, shout away, only the gates compromised, the wall was breached, not all lost. If we rush out now we can only temporarily alleviate the situation and can't solve the real problem at all. All of you, wait quietly. These were his words to the restless cavalry, and indeed to himself. They had been waiting for such a long time. As long as they continued to wait, waiting for the enemy to be exhausted and unable to maintain the high intensity of their attacks, that would be the time for them to attack, to destroy the enemy's exhausted front line and end this tragic siege once and for all even if more and more archers on the city walls were killed in close combat. The Swadian infantry at the city gates were in a difficult situation. The cavalry, who were the main force, still chose to wait because they were waiting for the final victory. For the bigger picture. Those archers and infantrymen were expendable targets. All fall back and enter the city walls and city gates in batches to form a joint defense. Manide, who was in the attic also gave the order loudly. Looking at the slightly skinny Swadian militia who were still wearing iron scale armor, he could not help but give the order loudly, for the sake of Swadian, hold off the jackals. For the sake of Swadian. The militia shouted loudly with excitement and malevolence on their faces. They had already understood Manide's arrangements. Because entering the city walls and the city gates to defend was actually using their own bodies to block those jackals, and to the militia who were at a disadvantage in terms of equipment and combat skills, was equivalent to death. But they did not care, striding down the stairs to the attic. Raising their wooden shields and holding their combat shovel, they charged forward, forcefully withstanding the two-handed battle axes of the jackal warriors. Even if the wooden shields were easily split open, and their companions in front of them were directly hacked to death, they would fearlessly charge forward. Jackals risked their lives for survival. Then these Swadians, too, could risk their lives for their homes. Lord Kent, let's leave the city walls. Manide walked down from the attic, seeing more and more jackals appearing at the city walls and city gates, he said to Kent very urgently, we must go to the council hall and set up a defense. No, there's no need for that yet. Kent turned his head, with a hint of malevolence in his face. The eleven elemental giants that he had summoned outside the window were shattered bit by bit by the jackal two-handed battle axes. Their elemental bodies completely collapsed and turned into elemental substances that declared their deaths. 
however, these elemental giants also took away at least a hundred jackal corpses. This had even affected a large number of soldiers. The opportunity was getting closer and closer. Kant was no longer willing to retreat to the council hall to set up a defense. If he left, the soldiers who had lost his encouragement would be broken through, and the defense of Drondheim fortress would also be broken through. At that time, the charge of the cavalry would not have much effect. Lord Kant. Manide tried to persuade him, you have to leave this place. No need. Kant replied firmly. The battle was in a dangerous situation, he definitely couldn't leave and the current defensive line was still not in danger. 500 Swadian militia filled the gap and used their lives to hold off the attacks of the jackals, even blocking the two corpse steps and the gate, bringing the battle to a standstill again. The jackals attacked even more frantically. However, the strength of their attacks had unknowingly become much lighter. The two-handed battle axes were still powerful. But they could not break the wooden shield in the left hand of the Swadian militia with a single strike, which often turn into two or three strikes, and even, because of its slow movement, was nailed to the skull by the militiamen's mattock, causing casualties. Even though the death rate of the Swadian militia was faster, the death rate of the jackals was also increasing. Manide saw that Kant did not leave the city wall at all, and a determined look appeared on his face. With the light crossbow in his hand, he continued to shoot towards the outside of the city wall, slowing down the attack speed of the jackals. But he frowned slightly and suddenly realized that something was wrong with the jackals. Their attack has slowed down, Manide muttered to himself. That's right. Kant took over his words, and a smile finally appeared on his grave and serious face, our turn. Whoosh whoosh. The flag planted in the middle of the road behind him instantly fluttered, sounded as if it was being blown by a strong wind. The golden lion with a red background moved against the wind, and its power instantly spread. The invisible area was divided, and the jackals enveloped in this area suddenly had heart palpitations for unknown reasons. Originally, they were still fighting forward with his two-handed axe and howling frantically, but now became afraid. Looking at the fierce battlefield in front of them and around, a chill appeared in their hearts. They began to become afraid, and cowardly. They were already short of water and food, but now they felt even more thirsty and hungry. The strength of their battle axes was declining. Especially when they saw the death of their companions, not only did they lose the craziness of wanting to avenge their comrades, but they felt more and more terrified. Their morale began to plummet in a short period of time. Even the Swadian militia felt that the demoralized jackals no longer had the terror they had before. They became weak and powerless. They also didn't dare to risk their lives, and even began to retreat. Howl! Realizing that their troops' morale was rapidly plummeting, the commander's shrill howling rang out. Hearing this familiar howl, the surrounding jackals seemed to have regained some of their courage. However, on the city wall, Kant, with his cold eyes, gritted his teeth and looked at a certain figure in the jackal crowd, and raised his right hand to wave it forward fiercely, shouting angrily, Do you know that my order is to take its life? Got it. The remaining seven Ravenstone rangers still had blood stains on their faces. However, the heavy bows in their hands were directly drawn to their full, and the cone-headed arrows were mounted on them and they directly loosened the fingers that hooked the bowstring to the jackal referred by Kant, so that the cone-headed arrows turned into a deadly black shadow and instantly appeared on the seemingly ordinary jackal more than twenty meters away. A cone arrow hit the center of the brows. A cone arrow hit the throat. Two cone arrows hit the eye socket. Three cone arrows hit the chest. Then, the seemingly ordinary jackal fell down, instantly dead with no chance of survival. To deter the enemy. The red-bottomed golden lion suddenly expanded, and the hunting sounds were violent and rapid. However, in the eyes of the stunned jackals, that figure's fall was as if the sky had collapsed. Their hearts were beating violently, and confusion filled their minds. Even the attack had completely subsided. 
because the chief commander of the Thousand Man Army had died. From the Mannheim coast, the strongest captain of the Thousand Man Army of the Granane Kingdom, the highest commander of the expedition army, had died. Their general had died. The confusion soon cleared, but instead of indignation, there was panic. The remaining 1,500 or so jackals were exhausted. They looked blankly at the sturdy fortress in front of them. Those figures with blood on their faces were still stubbornly guarding the city walls and city gates. Even if they were stepping on the corpses of their human compatriots, they would use their lives to block their human soldiers, these jackals suddenly felt a chill. Fear and unease filled their hearts. They couldn't even hold the battle axes in their hands firmly. Rumble rumble. The sound of rushing tides and breaking through the dam came from the south. These bewildered jackals stared at the men, mounted on the backs of a creature not found on the shores of Mannheim, all armored, horses and men, with their lances and spears raised, and thundered fearfully, as they slammed down upon the stolid jackals of the south. The neighing of horses, the screams of the jackals, and the power to tear a square formation into two halves. Phyrantus and his cavalry finally charged forward. Chapter 157, The Final Curtain Kant stood on the city wall with a calm face. When Phyrantus led the cavalry to charge on the flanks, directly pouncing towards the jackal's formation, the curtain had already been drawn, announcing the end of the battle. At the forefront were the Swadian knights. Ten knights in double mail, mounted on their fiercest armored steeds, raised their heavy cone-head lances, which were as thick as their arms, and pierced the bodies of the jackals with ease, stringing them into gourds. They used the inertia of the warhorse to continue charging into the depths of the formation. The Swadian knights were always at the forefront of the charge. They were sharp, and on both sides of them stretched Mamluk, a top-tier heavy horse from Salander. With the same galloping fury, the charge was second only to that of the Swadian knight, and the brandishing of the hands, with the speed of the steed, caused any jackal that came in contact to fall back with broken bones, spitting blood. There were no visible cuts, but even the bones were broken and thoroughly dented. Jackals fell one after another. As for more Swadian heavy cavalry, they were still riding behind. Even the Serendian horsemen behind them was also riding their horses, charging into the enemy formation with a spear in his hand. As light cavalry, the desert bandit elite, with a spear in the coordinated charge, although the melee effect was less effective, but armed with a machete they were still able to fight. Moreover, the heavy cavalry in front had already completely torn apart the enemy formation. All the cavalry were urging their horses forward. The horses' hooves trampled on the formations of the jackals, ramming them against those who had no time to escape and with the swinging of the knight's sword, scimitar, and mace, the jackals fell to the ground with groans of boredom and despair. Breaking the surface with a point. All the troops rushed in crazily, the center blossoming, completely crushing the resistance of the jack Allen. In fact, the jackals didn't resist either. When Phyrantus and his cavalry charged directly into the jackal formation, the exhausted jackals scattered trampling under horses' hoofs without an effective counterattack, or being turned into corpses by the handfuls of cavalry melee weapons against their heads. Even the formation was penetrated by the cavalry from the south to the north. Phyrantus even turned his horse around. Although some of the cavalry were injured, none of them died in battle. The resistance they received was abnormally weak. Even though the jackals had their spears pierced through their chests and their machetes slashed, they still did not raise the battle axes in their hands, only looked at their companions in a daze who were massacred, and did not know what to do, but just waited in a daze. They had lost the ability to continue fighting. Their morale had collapsed to the extreme. Their physical strength had been completely exhausted. No one gave an encouraging howl, because they did not want to continue to fight, with the madness in their eyes before completely disappeared. Looking at the cruel battlefield of the mess, they finally bowed their heads in despair, completely give up resistance. They did not even rearrange their formation to meet the enemy. Kant narrowed his eyes slightly. From the walls he could see clearly, 
breathing from the rapid strain to the now steady, waving his hand and saying, Everyone, stop shooting, stop attacking. Yes. The messengers replied. Then, they immediately turned around and left. Stepping on the corpses on the ground, they passed through the blood-stained city wall and attic to convey the Lord's order. The battlefield stopped. The arrow rain that was originally dense also stopped shooting at this moment. Even Phyrantus and his soldiers who were outside the walls had been told to stop attacking, to wait in the desert plains on the north side, with their lances and spears in their hands, and to look at the jackals standing outside the walls as if they had lost their minds and were dead. The battle is over, Kant said. There's no need to continue attacking. The jackals had lost the will to resist. And to Kant, they were captives, beautiful dinars. Living dinar. The leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn, who was still waiting in the Drondheim fortress with his guards and sentries to defend the council hall, could buy these high-level jackals at 50 dinars per person. Kant didn't think that he was rich enough to ignore this huge sum of money. So many high-level jackals were ready-made captives. And the dead jackals had no value at all. They were just a pile of corpses that were disgusting even when they were cleaned up. Kant's order to capture them was also passed down. This mission was undoubtedly the work of the cavalry outside, and the cavalry who had just entered the battlefield and completely destroyed the psychological defense line of these jackals were very happy with it. There was nothing better than defeating the enemy and then capturing them, so they could enjoy the beauty of victory. Drop your arms and surrender to save your life. Drop your arms and surrender to save your life. Drop your arms and surrender to save your life. Instead of giving orders to charge again, Phyrantus circled the field of battle unscathed and surrounded the jackals, slaughtering anyone who tried to escape. The desert bandits, nimble light cavalry, flapped their wings around with cutlasses and shouted out their words of surrender, but the cold, flashing cutlasses seemed more threatening. However, it was the same for the jackals who had completely lost their will to fight and their hope. The confused them might need an excuse. Bang, bang, bang. Bang! The two-handed battle axe fell on the sand under their feet. All these jackals fell to their knees, and there was no madness in their confused eyes, only a loss of future and the deepest despair, so deep that these jackals, once invincible on the coast of Mannheim, did not have the least inclination to resist. They kneeled on the battlefield filled with the corpses of their companions. The blood had dyed the sand red. It was so red that it was an eyesore. The closer he got to the city wall, the thicker the blood became, and the more corpses there were. The two still-burning steps of the dead, emitting black, scorched smoke, showed the cruelty of the battle, and the astonishing madness of the wolves in their desperation. They could even give up their own lives and not take it seriously. No matter how they were trampled to death, smashed to death, or burned to death, they had to become the stepping stone of their companions behind them. But now, this kind of self-sacrifice casualties seemed a little ridiculous. For all the remaining jackals had chosen to surrender, in the most shameful manner of the army, to their enemies, without conditions, in order to survive rather than die on the battlefield. Man-eyed. Kant turned his head and said with a calm expression, You are in charge of handling the captives. You should be the best at it. After a pause, he reminded, Tell Phyrantus to clean up the battlefield. I will inform Jocelyn to come and help you later. After you finish your own matters, report to me in the hall. Got it. Manide nodded immediately. All right. Kant nodded as well and turned to leave. The matter was handed down. The two of them were able to handle it very well. Lord Kant. After leaving the city wall, the Swadian infantry, who were covered in blood and wounds, hurriedly stood up and saluted Kant. At the same time, they quickly separated ten infantry soldiers to follow behind him and continue to act as guards. Yes. Kant nodded. Although his face was calm, his eyes were gloomy. There were less than twenty of his original fifty Swadian infantry left, and each of them was injured. 
even the ten infantry who had been assigned to serve as guardsmen were not as well equipped as they once were, with scalloped shields, tattered iron plates on the outside, and broken chainmail on the inside. Fresh blood seeped out and dyed the torn linen robe red. When those crazy jackals broke through the city gate, it was these fifty Swadian infantry who charged forward. In a short while, thirty people were killed. If it were not for the hundreds of Swadian militia who risked their lives to defend, these infantrymen would probably be completely wiped out, and it was possible that the city gate would be broken through. Those crazy jackal warriors were definitely not something that low-level jackals could compare to. Even in Kant's view. These advanced jackals from the coast of Mannheim, who had been taught combat skills and have fought on the battlefield, were worthy of the title of Tier 5, and it needed to take a Swadian of the same class to stop them. The increase in combat strength due to the racial advantage was too terrifying. After all, the height, weight, and strength of humans could not be compared to these high-level Jack Allen. Pay attention to rest after cleaning up the battlefield. Kant instructed the infantrymen and militia at the city gate, then turned around and continued to walk toward the council hall. The bodies of the dead had been gathered together and laid out in order at the gates, while militiamen worked together to bring down the more numerous bowmen from the walls, and peasant women gave them their last respect by wiping their bloodied faces with towels dipped in water. Dying in battle to protect their homes was a glorious death. My lord! Those strong peasant women walked over, wanting to help Kant. However, Kant frowned and said, No need. These peasant women retreated in embarrassment, their fierce faces filled with shyness, My lord, the way you led your troops to valiantly defend the fortress is just like the legendary hero. He <laughs> he. Kant only chuckled and no reply. Seeing that the peasant women were still holding pitchforks and kitchen knives, he calmly instructed, Go prepare lunch now. It's almost noon, and our soldiers haven't even had time to eat breakfast. Yes, my lord. The peasant women nodded. They were not good at fighting, but they were still able to handle life well. Kant returned to the council hall. It didn't take long for the aroma of cooking food to appear, and lunch was prepared. It was a fast-paced meal that could quickly replenish the energy consumed during wartime. There was plenty of supplies in the sentry oasis. Chapter 158, A Huge Sum of Money The peasant women cooked lunch. The soldiers also used this time to clean up the battlefield. The main thing was to properly place the bodies of the dead. However, the casualties of Kant's troops on the defensive side were evidently better than those of the jackals on the attacking side. Just outside the east wall, the flowing blood had dyed the sand red. Not far away, under the dune, the bodies with full of arrows or smashed brains were neatly arranged. Of the 3,000 elite jackals from the Mannheim coast, more than half had died in battle. It was extremely tragic. The surviving jackals were all injured. But no one pitied them. As invaders, these jackals had to be prepared to accept defeat after defeat. Instead of food and water, the desert bandits brought flax ropes, scowling and shaking their faces, and tied the jackals' hands behind their backs. Not far away, Phyrantus was still leading the cavalry to deter the captives from getting into trouble. But there was no resistance. The Jack Allen were actually tied up obediently. The jackals' expeditionary army, which had not eaten for many days to replenish their strength, and their bodies were extremely dehydrated, did not have any ability to resist. When the light returned, they retreated crazily. Their status became weaker and weaker. Just like that, they were easily tied up by the desert bandits' backs. They kicked and whipped the jackals' captives to the south side of the city gate, because right there, the leader of the trade caravan from Rivadan, Jocelyn, he was looking at these Jack Allen captives with a wide smile on his face. Occasionally, he would talk to Manid beside him, and the two of them would laugh even more enthusiastically. The leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn, could imagine how warmly he would be treated by the noble and iron mine owners when he returned to Rivadan after purchasing over a thousand jackals captives. The kingdom of Vikia was located in a snowfield, and its grain output was low, 
so its population was low. However, the snowfield had an extremely large amount of iron ore. With a little mining, one could dig out baskets of high-quality iron ore. This made the kingdom of Vikia feel a little awkward. The population of his own kingdom was small, and in the medieval era of cold weapons, mining ore was a dangerous job. Ordinary Vikians would not work at all, and there was no better option than to buy captives and become mining slaves. And the main economic pillar of the kingdom of Vikia was precisely these high-quality iron ores. In order to be able to mine large amounts of ores and turn them into iron ingots, the kingdom of Victoria would buy a large number of slaves almost every year. It could be said that a portion of the slave trade on the continent of Karadia was hyped up by the kingdom of Vikia. Now, the kingdom of Vikia had a new source of slaves. It was Lord Kant, located in the land of miracles. As long as there was enough dinar, who was better than human miners used Noel miners, as long as trained, rest for a period of time, handling well, completely WS the best miners, strong, know the commands, two belly can day and night the exploitation of mining, was popular with the miners. Of course, Kant also welcomed this. These mine owners of the kingdom of Vikia were his big customers. Otherwise, the endless dinar would not have appeared in his pocket so easily, becoming the help of Drondheim's level up. It was a good thing that everyone was happy. Just inside and outside the city wall, everyone was still busy. The feeling of having a common enemy disappeared. However, there was no excitement from the victors. Instead, there was a faint sadness. The familiar faces had been turned pale in the battle, lying on the sand, covered in white linen a memory that existed only in the public memory. They were the valiant guardians of the fortress, and the heroes who held the line to the end. Facing the strong close combat ability of the jackals. In fact, even the corpses of these dead warriors were incomplete. The farmers who were in charge of organizing their appearances had red eyes when they collected the corpses of the dead. Even the civilians who had seen many deaths, such a tragic battle, and such terrible wounds, other than the large-scale battle between the kingdoms, it was rare to see such a tragic sight on the continent of Karadia. This was the reason why the caravan of Rivadan had purchased so much linen. Even though they had already died in battle. But as a lord, Kant would never forget their contributions. Even though they had already died in battle, he could use a towel to wipe off the dirty blood on his face and use the pure white linen as a shroud to give them respect and honor after death as compensation. It was also a motivation for the surviving soldiers. Lord Kant would never forget anyone. The sun rose to the center of the sky. The temperature of the Naran desert suddenly increased, forming a billowing heat wave that spread across the entire desert. At noon. Sentry Oasis, the battlefield had basically been cleaned up. The corpses were all separated and piled up in order to facilitate the post-battle inventory. As the main battlefield, the blood-stained ground inside and outside the city walls and gates was also splashed and washed by the careful militia with clean water, restoring the yellow and orange sand to its original color and the rich smell of blood also became lighter. It was basically finished. The peasant women also walked over and called for the soldiers who were resting to eat. In the kitchen next to the council hall, buckets of lunch had already been prepared. It was steaming hot and fragrant. Because it was made in a hurry, it was no different from the food from before. However, many soldiers who ate in batches also had looks of anticipation on their faces because they saw that in the kitchen, the batch of sand gazelle that had been hunted at the end of the month yesterday had already been dragged out and hung on the wall. Ten of them were being quickly cut and skinned by the kitchen knives in the hands of the peasant women, moreover, they had cut open their bellies and dug out their internal organs. It seemed that they were preparing for the celebration banquet that night. And barrels of ale, rolled out by the Rivadan caravans who settled down in the grocery store, were a must-have for tonight's victory party. This made the soldiers who had survived the fierce battle and won the battle look a little happier. They ate their lunch in batches. In the council hall, Kant sat in his seat. On both sides of the long table, there were Phyrantus and Manite who had finished dealing with the matter 
and the leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn. It was lunchtime. At the same time, it was time for the two of them to report the results of the battle to Kant. Because it was not a secret matter, the leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn, did not avoid suspicion and leave. Moreover, to Kant, this merchant from the continent of Karadia could be considered half of his own people, at the very least, he would not secretly collude with the aborigines of this world, much less betray Kant and sell the most important resources. The four of them ate their food first. After all, because of this battle, they had not eaten their breakfast yet. After they were half full. Hmm, we are almost done eating. Kant wiped the corner of his mouth and said, who will tell us about the results of our battle? Looking at Phyrantus and Manide, the corner of his mouth curled into a smile. I am quite looking forward to the results of this battle. I'll go first. Manide nodded slightly, stood up, and bowed respectfully. He organized his words, his voice was filled with self-satisfaction, Lord Kant, in my opinion, this battle can be considered an epic level victory. We captured 1,432 Jack Allen. According to the calculation of 50 dinar per person, we received a total of 71,600 dinar. To be honest, in my opinion, this is also a huge sum of money that anyone would be tempted by. Of course. Kant nodded with a bright smile on his face. When the jackal's captives were escorted to the carriage of the trade caravan, he already knew the exact amount of the money. This huge sum of 71,600 dinar had been mixed with the balance of the savings, turning into an even more terrifying number. Balance, 149,130 dinar. Just under 1,000 dinar, Kant's savings would break into 150,000 dinar. Continent of Karadia. It could open 15 of the most expensive and most popular velvet dye factories in any town. And if that didn't prove the value of the money, then the cost of maintaining the Swadian cavalry pillars, the armored horsemen of the fourth level, the Swadian heavy cavalry, 5,000 men for a week. And it was in this one week. These were purely troops formed by armored heavy cavalry, not to mention the continent of Karadia. Even on Earth. Other than the modern and modern battlefields of any era, in ancient and modern Chinese and foreign field battles, these 5,000 Swadian man-at-arms would be enough to completely defeat the enemy corps' main force. They would be like a torrential flood, breaking the enemy's formation into pieces. Because these 5,000 heavy cavalry could be said to be invincible in a frontal assault. Even if there were 100,000 infantrymen, they would not be able to hold on. They would be directly crushed by the surging torrent until the formation collapsed. Kant's smile became more and more brilliant. Just thinking about it in his mind was a wonderful moment for him. For this reason, he looked at the leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn, and said with a smile, Tonight, I will hold a celebration banquet. I hope you brought enough malt liquor this time. This time, I will let the soldiers drink as much as they want. It's completely enough. Jocelyn nodded affirmatively. Very good. Kant's smile was thick. Nothing could soothe the hearts of the soldiers after the war better than alcohol. If it was the custom in the continent of Karadia, not only would there be alcohol, but there would also be a sum of dinar as a reward for these brave people. However, most of the time, it would be thrown into the hands of the tavern owner and the white breasts of those prostitutes, in the end, due to the various taxes of the lord, it was returned to the lord's treasury. Of course, Kant also handed over the matters of purchasing to Manai to handle. However, Kant turned his head and saw the solemn expression on Phyrantus's face. He also frowned slightly. Next was Phyrantus, reporting on the losses of this battle. Chapter 159, Tragic Casualties However, when Kant looked at Phyrantus, the smile on his face disappeared. His breathing calmed his heart. Since he already knew the happy news, it was time to report the unhappy news. Kant calmly asked, How are the casualties of my soldiers in this battle? It's quite severe. Phyrantus stood up, bowed, and looked very solemn. 
speak, Kant narrowed his eyes. Hearing Phyrantus's words, Manit and Jocelyn also fell silent. This was indeed a topic that needed to be taken seriously. Taking a deep breath, Phyrantus said in a deep voice, On the city wall, thirteen of the twenty Ravenstern rangers were killed, thirty-seven of the one hundred Viagir archers were killed, and forty of the fifty Swadian archers were killed. As the commander of the city wall, Kant was already mentally prepared. But now, after hearing the report, his face still started to turn grim. The casualties were indeed beyond his expectations. With a gloomy face, Kant said, Continue. Yes, Phyrantus nodded. After slightly organizing his words, he continued to report in a deep voice, 37 of the 50 Swadian footmen were killed, and out of 500 of the Swadian militia, at this point, his tone paused, as if he was hesitating. Continue, Kant frowned and urged. Phyrantus finally sighed and said in a serious tone, 312 of the 500 Swadian militia soldiers were killed. What? Manit exclaimed. As the commander in charge of the attic, he had led the 500 militia to launch a counterattack against the Jack Allens. When the 500 Swadian militiamen were stationed on the attic, and the 500 man formation was still quite complete. However, when they were sent to support the attic and the city gates, the casualty rate was more than half, almost all militia troops were crippled. If the battle lasted any longer, all of them would probably be wiped out. Kant was silent, Jocelyn was silent, and Manit and Phyrantus were also silent. This battle was too tragic. The troops responsible for defending the city had a casualty rate of more than half. Kant did not feel it when he left the city walls and city gates. Now that he heard the report, although it was just numbers and not seeing the corpses in person, his heart was still very heavy. After all, these were his soldiers. His breathing was calm. Kant let his emotions relax and continued to ask, what about the cavalry? The casualties of the cavalry are relatively small. Phyrantus spoke, his tone was finally no longer grave. Ten cavalries, five Mamluk, eighty-seven heavy cavalries, forty Serendian horsemen, forty elite desert bandits, seventy desert bandits. No one died in battle. Only a few dozen people were slightly injured, and it did not affect the upcoming battle. They were all superficial wounds that did not require treatment. Very good, Kant finally let out a breath of air. This was his true trump card. The level 5 cavalries he had trained previously did not suffer any casualties, and the level 4 cavalries were still in shape. This was enough. However, out of his expectations, the 40 elite desert bandits, as well as the 50 desert bandits that Kant had won from the lottery, and the 20 desert bandits that he had recruited in the new week, did not suffer any casualties either. This made him feel a little more surprised after hearing the high number of casualties. Although the desert bandits were only level 3 cavalries, they were still considered as cavalries after all. These light cavalries formed a group and charged together with the heavy cavalries at the rear. The crushing effect was very strong. Moreover, when dealing with emergencies, they could also rush over as quickly as possible. They were much more flexible than the heavy cavalry. Looking at the three people across the long table, Kantian also opened his mouth and nodded slightly. With a calm expression, he said, at the very least, we have won. Yes, the three of them nodded in response. With an army of around 800 soldiers, they were able to take on 3,000 Jack Allen warriors who were at least level 5 footmen. These tragic losses were reasonable. After all, in terms of close combat, these Jack Allen warriors were not malnourished, low-level Jack Allen with weak physiques could not compare to them. They were like slaughtering machines on the battlefield. All of them were 2.3 meters tall and weighed 300 kilograms. Because they had sufficient nutrition, their bodies were full of muscles. They were equipped with sophisticated male armor and two-handed axes made of iron. This was the reason why even the level 4 footmen, the Swadian footmen who were known for their defensive strength in the game, could not withstand the frenzied attacks of the Jack Allen. After all, 
when they swung the two-handed weapons, the strength was extremely powerful. It was similar to the bardic that the troops of the Kingdom of Viagirs liked to equip the most. However, the attack power and battle experience of these Jack Allen warriors could be compared to the one and only level 6 soldiers. They were known as the strongest and invincible footmen in the entire continent of Karadia, the royal guards of the Nord family. Kant concluded in his heart. In terms of the actual situation of this battle, he had won by luck. If he had not destroyed the supplies of the Jack Allen expeditionary force that set up in the Naran Desert in advance. Otherwise, the Drontheim fortress would have been conquered and the Oasis lookout would have been given away. Most importantly, he had destroyed the low-level Jack Allen tribe. He had destroyed the well. Not only had the expeditionary force lost all its supplies, but hunger and thirst had weakened them, and they had not rushed to the front during the siege. They also used the low-level Jack Allens as cannon fodder and stepping stones. If none of these had happened, Kant could imagine the situation of the battle. The well-supplied Jack Allen expedition army would be in a high-spirited formation. Just like now, there were 3,000 people in five square formations. And right in front, there was a chaotic formation of low-level Jack Allens. With the tribe's 3,000 low-level Jack Allens at the center, and the 2,000 low-level Jack Allens captured from other areas of the desert, there were more than 5,000 Jack Allens in total. They howled and began to attack the two city gates of Drontheim Fortress. More and more corpses fell. As for the high-level Jack Allens, they raised the corpses as shields and approached. Then, they piled the corpses on the city wall and quickly piled up the slopes. This was enough for the expedition army at the back to charge up the five meters high city wall and enter the human fortress to start a massacre. In the end, the archers on the city wall would be eliminated. The footmen and cavalries that stubbornly resisted would all retreat into the council hall. But by then, it would be difficult for them to hold on by themselves. The best outcome was that Kant could only dejectedly let the existing elite troops use their own lives to fight their way out of the fallen Drontheim fortress, he looked at the oasis lookout with a face full of unwillingness. He could only choose to return to the dukedom of Leo and hide his identity. He might even have a chance to borrow the system's temporary side quest and make a comeback. If he was unlucky, he would be chopped into meat paste by the high-level Jack Allen that rushed up on the spot. Kant's heart was solemn. This was indeed a fluke. He was lucky that he messed up all the arrangements of the Kingdom of Grey Main. Whether it was intentional or not. The final victor was Kant. Oasis Lookout. The southern part of the Naran Desert. This battle was completely under Kant's control. Continue to clean up the battlefield in the afternoon. Kant calmed down the bumpy ride in his heart. He looked at Phyrantus and Manit and said, Report to me after you've done all the statistics. Understood, the two of them nodded. Lunch soon ended. There were still a lot of trivial matters waiting for them in Oasis Lookout. Including the treatment of the injured soldiers and the burial of the dead soldiers, both of them had to personally attend to them. Kant, on the other hand, had more important things to deal with. The system accounting after the war. Just as Manit had complimented him earlier, saying that this was an epic level victory, it was indeed true for Kant. This was because the system had already given the best assessment and proved that he had won the glorious achievement of this battle. I'm done eating. Kant put down his knife and fork and wiped the corner of his mouth. After chatting a few more words with the three of them, he pushed his chair away and left, returning to his room. Now it was time for him to deal with his matters. A dialogue box popped up on his retina. Ding system prompt. You defeated a powerful enemy with a weak army. It can be said that you won a perfect victory. This is an epic victory. You have obtained 10 honor points and 5,000 reputation points. Kant's breathing was a little hurried. But it was definitely not because of this dialogue box. Just below, another dialogue box popped up. Ding system prompt. The result of this battle has been sent back to Karadia, causing a storm of discussion. This is a legendary level comment. 
you have obtained 10 honor points and 5,000 reputation points. Looking at the dialogue box on his retina. Even with Kant's current good mental control ability, he felt a little thirsty. This was not an ordinary reward. Two comments. Epic victory and legendary level comment. The direct benefits were 20 honor points and 10,000 reputation points. Very good. Kant sat on the chair in his room with a smile on his face. This was the real post-war benefit. If he could handle something today, he would choose to do it today, this was Kant's usual creed. The data flow in his eyes started to flicker, and his mind had already communicated with the system. He said in a deep voice, System, immediately open the lottery store and directly do ten consecutive draws. Kant's tone was firm. But the system still followed the usual practice and popped out the dialogue box to ask. Ding system prompt. Ten consecutive draws will give an additional reward of one draw. Yes slash no? Yes, Kant did not hesitate. The system responded. On the retina in front of him, the dialogue box refreshed. The colorful treasure chest appeared there, and it was slightly opened, releasing a small amount of colorful light. It carried the kind of beautiful light that penetrated one's heart, as if it wanted to absorb one's gaze. This was exactly what Kant needed. Or rather, it was the system gift pack inside the treasure chest that he desperately wanted. Chapter 160, The Newly Obtained Council Hall Kant's voice confirmed that the system had popped up a dialogue box on his retina. The five-colored treasure box was slowly opening. Ding! The system lottery has begun. System prompt. The multicolored light became more and more intense, and at the same time, more and more dazzling. Finally, the treasure box was completely opened. The dialogue box on his retina quickly popped up. You received a construction pack, stable. You received a construction pack, tavern. You received a construction pack, stone paved road. You received a construction pack, linen workshop. You received a construction pack, salt workshop. The dazzling five-colored light faded slowly. Kant raised his eyebrows slightly. What appeared on the dialogue box was five construction pack. The list continued to pop up. Item pack, date palm jungle times 25 arcs. Item pack, wheat field times 50 arcs. Item pack, chi grass beach times 15 arcs. Item pack, alfalfa field times 20 arcs. Item pack, flax field times 10 arcs. The five colored light disappeared. There were five item packs in a row. This is interesting, Kant raised his eyebrows slightly and glanced at the list in the dialogue box on his retina. He thought to himself, it seems that the item pack that I have received in this lottery is all related to construction and agriculture. There were only these two kinds of item packs. They were indeed the basic elements of construction and agriculture that could allow Drondheim to continue to develop. And the various kinds of fields. Date palm provides the raw material for food and sugar, and it forms a forest that petrify the desert land, lowers the temperature, creates an oasis climate, and protects the plants and animals in the oasis from the sun and cold nights. He obtained 25 acres from the lottery, plus the previous 5,30 acres of date palm jungle, is enough to form a large scale forest. Kant was slightly excited. There were also 50 arcs of wheat fields from the system, 15 arcs of chi grass beach, 20 arcs of alfalfa fields, and 10 arcs of flax fields that could be used American Samoa cash crops with the linen workshop. In Kant's view, these fields were more important than the buildings obtained. The combination of the two. Agriculture, animal husbandry, handicraft industry. Everything was in place. It completed in the foundation of Drondheim Fortress. At this moment, the dialogue box of the system popped up in Kant's eyes. Ding! You have acquired a special gift pack. You open the troop class pack and find that it is the growth of all living things, all plants grow into mature stage. His eyes were slightly stunned. Kant subconsciously looked at the north. Through the window, 
in the desert outside the attic, there was a sandy land that was obviously darker in color. There seemed to be some trees growing there, but in the end, only rows and rows of neat stumps were left after trees were cut down. That was the date palm jungle. The five acres of date palm jungle that Kant once had. But because of Kant's order, it was completely cut down and became a large amount of wood that was currently stored in the fortress. But most of the time, these excellent woods that should be used as pillars were not used for construction, but were chopped into firewood and stuffed into the stove in the kitchen to be burned, turning into wisps of green smoke and dissipating into nothingness. Is that so? Kant muttered slightly. He already understood the effect of using it. It was the miraculous power that restored all the date palm jungle that he had ordered to be cut down. Ding! The ten consecutive draws this time are over. The system gave a notification. Very good, Kant's lips curled into a smile as he looked at the gift pack on his retina. His heart was still a little restless, because in his inventory, there were still ten honor points that could still be used. Taking a slight breath, Kant said in a deep voice, Continue the draw. Ding system lottery begins. On the system dialog box, the five-colored treasure box appeared once again. Dazzling light blossomed. The list on the dialog box immediately began to refresh. You have received the hero pack, James. You have received the item pack, commanding power. You have received the construction pack, warden camp. The first three gift packs were very normal. Kant's lips curled up. He was very satisfied with this. After all, he had never seen a bad pack from the system. But then his eyes were filled with shock. And the shock was getting bigger and bigger. You have received a special pack, double the number of recruits, constant. You have received a special pack, harvest week, double the agricultural output. You have received a special pack, terrain modification, lake. You have received a special pack, refugee tide, 500 peasant. You have received a special pack, migrant tide, 500 peasant. You have received a special pack, level up, council hall. You have received a special pack, level up, castle. Seven in a row. All of them were special packs. Kant's eyes widened slightly, and his mood was even more agitated than the previous ten consecutive lottery. In the system's rules, special gift packs were much more precious than other regular gift packs. This was because these gift packs with special effects were directly affected by the rules. Compared to ordinary gift packs of buildings, troop class, items, and so on, they were very much better. But before Kant could take a closer look, the dialog box popped up again on his retina. Ding you have acquired the construction pack. You have opened the construction pack and found that it was the council hall, village. What? Kant's eyes were filled with shock. So much so that he stood up on his chair. His breathing was a little hurried. His gaze was fixated on the dialog box on his retina. He used almost all of his restraint before finally sitting down again. The depths of his eyes were still filled with shock and disbelief as he looked at the final construction pack. It was as if he had sensed Kant's agitation. The system popped up an introduction. Council Hall, village This is the foundation of a village. When you have this council hall, it means that you can build a village. Remark, this council hall will randomly select a kingdom's village. Please use it carefully. Kant swallowed his saliva. Kant's lips curled into a smile. He couldn't help but want to laugh out loud. This was really a surprise that came out of nowhere. Just this council hall alone was already worth the 21 gift packs that he obtained from these two lucky draws. In Kant's opinion, even if he completely gave up these gift packs in exchange for this council hall, it would still be worth it. This represented a new village. A new beginning as well as the continuation of a new power. Good, 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 Kant sat down again. His face was slightly red, and he could not help but mutter in a low voice, very good, very good, very good. This is really too good. 
his 16 years of etiquette training had been almost completely defeated at this time. But he could not help but be excited. Kant could have chosen another reasonable area, built the council hall, and developed a new village. And one in the light and one in the dark. Let the oasis look out Drondheim become the focus of everyone's attention, but in the dark, for his own safety and faster development, he could develop a new village, just like the two wheels of a carriage, driving side by side. Most of the time, it was a cunning rabbit with three burrows. If an irresistible accident happened, then there was still a chance to save himself. It would not be the same as now. If he made a wrong step, he would lose the whole game. Kant, as the leader, knew the dangers of walking on the edge of the cliff very well. If he had not chosen the right route, had the system provided absolute help in the initial stage, and had some luck, perhaps his bones would have been thrown into the sand under the oasis lookout. It really is luck. Kant could not help but sigh. He held back his excited thoughts. Kant forced himself to regain his calm. His gaze swept across the list of gift packs that had been drawn ten times in a row. He smiled and said, These rewards are not bad. A hero pack. An item pack. A construction pack. And seven special gift packs with the power of rules. He muttered to himself. Kant communicated with the mind system said, Open the hero pack and item pack. In his mind. The 22 golden cards he had just obtained started to flip, and two cards with a man figure and horn on them suddenly exploded into a golden data stream, dissipating into nothingness. One of the cards formed a data stream and appeared behind the dune on the eastern side of Oasis Lookout. A figure appeared. Riding on a horse and wearing a black linen hood, he slowly rode up the dune. However, he was not an enemy. He did not have any weapons on him and the only thing that could be considered a weapon was perhaps the two meters long stick on his back. However, although the clothes on this slowly approaching rider were clean, he gave people a sense of dejection. He came to the top of the dune and lifted his hood. It was a face of a middle-aged man. Looking at the city gate and the city wall, where people were still cleaning up the blood stains, he frowned slightly. However, when he saw a figure who was only commanding under the city wall, his face also showed some excitement. He lightly knocked on the horse's abdomen and urged the horse down the dune, walking toward the fortress not far away. In front of him, ten desert bandits had already received the news of the arrow tower and were rushing over on their horses. Kant wasn't sure about all of this at the moment. But in his room, an item that looked like an enlarged version of the ox horn appeared on the table. It was wrapped in silver and gold and had exquisite gemstones as decorations. Introduction popped up. Commanding power, horn. Attribute, 1. The morale of your side within a 500-yard radius of the horn will increase. 2. When the horn is blown, the troops will gain a 10-minute excited status and maintain morale. 3. When the troops are ambushed, the morale of the troops will not drop. 4. When the morale of the troops collapses, the sound of the horn can reignite the fighting spirit of the troops. Introduction, this is the legendary horn. Having it means having victory. Kant looked at the horn that looked like a work of art. His eyes were filled with joy. Because it this commanding power had the same origin as intimidation. It was derived from the title of the mod of Mount and Blade, Light and Darkness. There was only a difference. When it was used as a title, the two would never appear at the same time. But now, it could be used as an item, as a strange object. It just happened to appear in Kant's hands. As a divine weapon on the battlefield, it was supposed to display its strongest effect. 